we'll commence at 7.05. Um, the first item is to review the agenda for any addition, removal, adjustment of items. I've got one thing, it's more of a clarification, but underneath continuing business, discussion of the planning grant opportunity draft verbiage. Um, we also need to talk about a scope of work um, for Addison County Regional Planning if we choose to use a consultant. So that will be another discussion item, I guess, at that point. There are no other comments, issues with the schedule. Agenda, we'll go on to administrative matters. First one being approval of the September minutes. Entertain a motion for that. Tom Wallace, anybody? Melissa seconds. seconds. Any discussion? Uh, hearing none, everybody that uh, um, would like to approve the minutes, say aye or raise your hand. Anybody opposed? Any abstentions? So it sounds like that's unanimous. Um, moving along, the next thing is, is uh, any uh, report from the zoning administrator from um, last month? Just a couple of quick things that are going on. The Development Review Board approved the 20 unit um, housing next to the fire station. Um, they're hoping to continue through that process and hopefully break ground in April. Uh, if anyone has been over by the fire station, they are moving um, right along on the business park. Um, and that's been all approved for the first building and all the infrastructure as, as well. Um, and a handful of just general building permits and a lot of real estate's been moving around in the last year, so. Any questions for Chris? So I've got a question because of some other activity I'm doing is, do you, off the top of your head, how many building permits have we issued this year compared? Uh, compared to last year? Yeah, we were in last year. Um, just general permits or like housing style? For housing would be the thing I'd be looking for. Yeah. 12 this year so far. And last year, twelve as in, but that was for the full year, so we still have a couple months. Great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I just had a quick question. <clears throat> um, when, yeah, when a building permit is given for building a home, uh, is there a is there a time limit? Or I don't know. I sorry, I'm not familiar with building permits. As far as do they have to build within a certain amount of time, or how does that work? The, uh, typical permit's good for two years. Um, and then they can ask for, a, they can apply for a one year extension. Um, of course, with everything in the last year and a half, we, between COVID and building and crazy, uh, most towns have been pretty lenient on those numbers. But right. most people are knocking them out. They get the permit, they build it within the year. Right. Any questions for Chris? Thank you. Uh, the next item is I did meet with a select board um, and I was sloppy about keeping you all informed. I apologize for that. I was supposed to be at the, the meeting I was supposed to be at was 
Um, I was deferred based on the agenda load. So I ended up meeting with them on the 27th. Um, it was uh, pretty much a data jump dump from my, on my part on what we've been doing with the town plan and working on the, the grant and collecting information or managing, managing, I think is probably the better word, the, the uh, master task list for the uh, town plan. There was uh, very, no, no significant questions at all. I think there was, there was one question that pertained to um, the change in the board's charter, this commission's charter, given the new um, responsibilities, if you will, with with the design review board, which um, you know, I I casually uh, mentioned I was I was probably on the t tail end as many of us were with that whole thing, and then the shift. I did bring up the point that that shift is going to allow us to spend a whole lot more time planning, uh, which we are picking up and starting to um, work on. So it was a, a, a brief brief and um, seemed to go pretty well. I don't have anything um, to talk about as far as miscellaneous correspondence is concerned. Um, and I also, it kind of come to grips with me tonight as I walked by the box that's got about four inches of paper in it <laughs> that I've been remiss on picking up and keeping track of anything that gets put into the, uh, the little mailbox here at the town hall. So I'll improve upon that. The stuff I did look at it briefly, most of that was the permitting process for the three solar collectors that are going um, on in town right now, the one on Lathrop's land, the one at the dump, and then the one down on Rathburn's uh, property in, on South Bristol. Um, open position. I, I have uh, approached an individual and they have accepted um, the challenge, if you will. Um, and um, they're in the process of applying um, with a select board and that individual, Shannon Hill, who is one of the um, operators of Hill, Hill Farms down on uh, Burpee Road and quite a few other locations. Um, I, I approached her um, because of the agricultural background that she has. Um, and as a large landowner, I think she could be um, beneficial to this board. So I have done that. I don't, um, and I'll just keep it open and see if anybody else has pulsed anybody or have any has anything going on. That if she accepts, or if there's a competition, that <coughs> that will fill our ninth slot, and we will return to a full board. Yay. Any comments or discussion on that? Good. Yeah. And, and Melissa, you'll have a co-sister. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, moving along to um, continuing business. Um, we have the discussion of the continuing, the continuing discussion of the grant application. Um, Jeff has been working on that. So I guess at this point, Jeff, if you wanna kind of update us and sure. let us know where, where you're at and where you uh, need help. Yeah, so I need to So I've got the document up on the screen right now, Jeff. Oh, that, that's the one that- That's the one you want? Uh, that's fine. That's the one that uh, Kevin did. I can also- I mean, you can see the actual verbiage if you would get the one that I sent you around. Yeah, so we probably yes. should lead into that if Jeff needs that to support this discussion. That's pretty much a bunch of stuff off the cuff that I started to initiate a conversation there. if we need it. So I'm just going to share it with everyone else so they can understand what we're talking about. <laughs> Yeah. 
There it is. There. Um, I'll try and get Kevin's document and his document both up at the same time. I can here. It's not doing it for me. Okay. Hold a second. Is it a way to make that a little bigger? Down to the bottom there. It says 100%. Yeah, let's see. There you go. There we go. That's all the screen I got. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Uh, here we go. So I can't seem to get both of them. What's going on here? Hold on, just okay. It's all good. Take it down. Okay, I just so where did everything go? <sighs> One. My screen. Okay, so some of this we went over already last time. Um, you can scroll down, um, Kevin, to. Um, so if you go to 2.1 project type, so before we had zoning and subdivision bylaw and planning for designated area, but I thought we would add infrastructure or capital improvement planning because that's, as we talked about making this a broader um, uh, project that would not just look at housing, but how housing would impact the infrastructure and what infrastructure improvements we might want to do, which could be sidewalks or many, you know, road changes, whatever. So I thought put that in because it's more comprehensive and it's a reason why we're not just doing the bylaw grant. Well, so I had a discussion with Adam. Um, yeah. And he, and you know, Chris has said it, Adam's saying it, I think Katie's saying it, that we should be maybe going towards the bylaw grant as uh, opposed okay. to the NPG one. Uh -huh. And the reasoning for that is? When I talked to, uh, when I talked to, so, and, and a lot of this is me, and it doesn't necessarily, I don't know how the rest of the commission feels about this, but I was looking at a clean, backing up and taking a very broad view. Yeah. And I don't think even, even the sort of things that we're considering, if we're going to look at housing, I don't think that um, even from Adam's point of view, if we, if we do a lot of prep work or research or analyzing zones and all that kind of stuff, it still falls in within working the regs. You know, sure. the finished product is, you know, upgraded regs, but the whole background of determining what you're going to upgrade, I think. And so we've got, you know, we're getting a lot of advice to stay away from the MPG for some reason. Because it's easier to get the bylaw grant? Is that the thinking? It might be. Yeah, the MPG is a fairly competitive grant, and it's a fairly broad spectrum grant, as you can yeah. see. Um, the, the bylaw grant is, is a lot more focused. So it, in theory, it should be less competitive. Yeah. So I think, so uh, I it, think I haven't, I haven't actually looked at the, at the application for the bylaw grant, but I think it's less, um, comprehensive. So we could look at, we could certainly, I could take a look at that. Um, I wonder at this point myself, but I just didn't know. But if Katie and Adam both think so, then maybe there's a good reason because they have a better sense of how these grants go. Yeah, because there's, so I, I don't want to throw a monkey wrench in everything you've done. Today. It, I, I think most of this is transferable. I do too. Yeah. Um, so, okay, well, let me look at it and see what can be transferred. But why don't we look at what we have here sure. for now? Um, so anyway, so that probably is, is irrelevant then because we're not, it's not going to be in. But I, I, I agree that, you know, if we keep this broad, even if we're looking at uh, zoning rewrite, that you'd be looking at 
Yeah, because I think you want to say if, if you increase, I mean, my thing is <laughs> increase housing, and that's going to increase traffic and walking patterns. So you would want to look at that at the same time. And if you change traffic and walkability issues, then that impacts housing. So it seems like a virtuous circle to me. Um, but maybe we slip that in or maybe we just use that for the next grant. Or maybe we don't need a grant for it. Maybe we just look at it and say, well, it's obvious we need a sidewalk on this street. Is um, there any danger of not getting a grant because it's not focused enough? If you just say we want to look at everything? Um, I, I don't know. And, and, and Jeff may have hit the nail on the head is that when we actually write out what we're applying for is keep it to the bylaws with, the, with your internal discussion of more knowing that the bylaws are going to, if, if, you, if you focus on the housing aspect of it, is going to indirectly focus on infrastructure and flood res and natural resource planning and things like that. So uh, I think you are correct, Rob. Is is the, the bylaws in the in your zoning are, are the focus of the grant, and you once you get the grant, you take it from there and keep it within the confines of zoning. Yeah. All right. Well, I can certainly. I, I think it's easily transferable. So why don't I look at that? Um, over the next week, and then I can just see what I, I think it's. A, I'm pretty sure it's a less extensive grant application, which is great. By me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, is there anybody guess, else? No, I'm just. I uh, I don't know what I did. I can't get my screen to go big again. And everybody, it's very small. So I'm going to go out of the meeting and come back in. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> And by now, everyone seems to be yelling across that. So. Right. Um, okay, should we wait for them? Yeah, we'll see they come back in. So we're just standing tight waiting for Melissa to rejoin us. Okay, now I can see everything. <laughs> okay, great. Sorry. Okay, so if you can go to 2.4 there. Chris, where you are. Uh, all of it's the same except the end. You have to scroll down to the next page. So uh, you don't have the changes. This is not, this is the old, old one, I think. Can I put the right one? Uh, 831, you're yeah, right. I can send you this. Yes, please. So I sent it yesterday. I'm pretty sure you got you were on the back there it is. Okay. So if you scroll down to two point four. Oh, sorry, I need to share it. I just need to get this. Um, can you see the the one I just reopened, folks? I, I should be right at the very top of it. No, it's still the previous document. Yeah, let me change my no, share. Yeah. Sorry about that. Now we're back. Increase the size a little. There we go. And you said 2.4? Yeah. yeah, so all the way down at the bottom. So the only difference on this is the last sentence, which is where I uh, uh, added something about investigate what impacts housing changes 
will have on other areas, especially transportation. So it just changes as appropriate. Um, is that something we should take out if we're just going to do the bylaws or just leave it in? I think it's fine. I, I think it adds to your scope. Yeah. Okay. But that's just me. I, I yeah. Anyone else? I, I don't feel like it. Yeah. What about um, people on Zoom? Any comments? Yeah, I would leave it in. Yeah. I mean, if they think it's too much, they'll just say, don't do this, I imagine. Yeah. Uh, okay. So somebody, somebody's going to. Proofread, right? So, because one families was misspelled there. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So, project location, which is the next one, we had briefly discussed this last time that we would say that the location would be the village planning area and the rural planning area, but not the conservation planning area because uh, development is severely restricted there. Does that seem reasonable? Mm -hmm. that so? does it yeah, say? it does right there. And that's what the plan says. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's yeah. okay. No problem. Better to ask questions. Yeah. Um, so then, um, then it's a, these are just sort of uh, boilerplate. Are we a single municipality? Then there's um, project issue and urgency. 4.1, um, and Kevin, you had some additional language to add, or? Uh, so this, the, the, the questions you had, um, I got the impression, you know, they all said this is new. Yeah. And I got the impression you were looking for a discussion on what sure. to fill in there. But if you've, if you've already penned something in, that's... Yeah. Yeah, no, this is what I put in, but this is new. This, we didn't have this last oh, okay. time. I see what um, uh, so maybe that wasn't clear. I was saying that, well, there's a mismatch between housing needs and housing stock. And I gave some statistics from the plan um, and, and talked about the village planning area, what would allow more flexibility and affordability in this area, and then what would work in the rural planning area but preserve its rural nature, which is also part of both, tap, both state goals and our goals. And then I briefly talked about, again, about how changes in housing will impact infrastructure. And so those are the, but, but the urgency is the housing part. Any comments? I think it sounds good. <laughs> so here was what other funding sources were considered, and why is the MPG program the best source? Well, that might not that might not make it into the uh, bylaw modernization, but they might ask why the bylaw modernization is granted, so, and we could just switch them. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not a municipal plan project, so that part is irrelevant. Um, the next part was uh, municipal plan implementation project readiness. So this is for a project that implements the plan. And so how is it important identified as an important implement and implementation action in the plan. And the response is that town plan list says its first priority, uh, its first implementation activities to conduct a housing study and to update zoning UDR regulations. Yeah. And that we already agreed that this would be our top priority. So I think we're clear on that. Um, other background. <laughs> Are there any additional community efforts or activities leading up to this application that would provide extra context for this project? Maybe the town plan we just put out. Yeah, well, we just got a bit much. They're not talking about the plan because we just talked about the plan. This is, uh, 
Let's go ahead and sample again. Where's the... Are they maybe talking about community input? That's a separate place. That comes in on another okay. question. Okay. Would, would this be if we had a housing committee or commission that was also had efforts in works towards us? Yeah. yeah. I mean, so the example, if you look at the sample they give on the other side, they talk about the town, it says the town recently participated in a town forest recreation planning initiative. So it's things like that as well. Um, the closest we really have lately that might have some impact would be the um, the Bristol Trails Network um, and the, but that really doesn't affect, impact the zoning aspect of it much. I would say that um, we're in sync. Um, we could consider that we're in sync with regional plan, which has made this a priority. Right? And then Addison County Community Trust has also issued a report recently that um, identifying housing shortages for, um, it's mostly focused in Middlebury, but it's focused, it's an Addison County focus. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been where the gents have yeah. <laughs> yeah. well, this, yeah. this is an optional section. As you see, the entire section is only five points. So, <laughs> so maybe, unless we have, this seems stretches to me, but maybe. Because they're out external to the town. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we can think about it. Let's see if it's actually in the other, in the other application. Let's see. Uh, Let's see. project management yep yeah so this is 4.6 i um how the project and consultant will be managed who will make decisions um kevin has suggested the project will be managed by the bristol planning commission appointed body of members the planning commission will collaboratively work to revise the udr that will ultimately go through a public review process and show with town voters. Is that, did, did you get a sense that, is that what they're trying to ask for here, Chris? Is that, yeah. Is that, okay, then that, I think that plan, that language sounds fine to me. That, um, I mean, the only other thing they added again in the sample response was the, um, um, how often the committee would meet. So it's, so yeah, we could just say something to the effect that we have a standing monthly meeting and then we can meet twice a month. As, as, as needed, and meet twice a month as needed. Yeah. So just something quick and just yeah. about the recurrence of your meetings. Okay. That's in, that seems fine. Uh, section five public outreach. We did talk about this last time, but I just didn't have a chance to get to it. That's two of us. Um uh Kevin has talked about discussions and review the project we've done at public meetings. Key points in progress will be communicated out through social media channels. Public review process will be conducted as part of the final review and vote. You may remember we looked at uh, Katie's one from fiscal year 19 and she listed like all the events that we have. And I suppose we can do that. Seems sort of hokey to me, but Let's see again what it, what it, I think yours is fine. We might list a few of the things that we have and say that we'll, you know, have a booth at Pocock Rocks and at the Harvest Festival next year and things like that. I mean, I thought the most effective one that we did when I was on the Planning Commission, and I think it was for the first round of the major rewrite of the town plan, we just had a public open house. Yeah, we happened to do it at Bristol Works just because they had the space because they, um, the uh, supervisory union had moved into their new office yet, so they had a big empty office we could use. Um, and this was, I think, still under construction. So we just we had pizza and soft yeah. drinks, and we had 
it was the next hour and a half was that just let people come in and ask questions and, and what kind of um attendance did we get it was moderately attended it was better than i expected what what, what time of year was it Do you remember <laughs> goodness gracious i'm sorry well, <laughs> would have been the envelope here fall yeah might have been winter time yeah because uh, I, I almost remember there was a concern about weather really okay I would be concerned that we list too many things that drive us to commitments and then forget about Well, we can do a for example, you know, okay. public events such as or or possibly a, including a public open house yeah. and, and we'll public, use, public forums. We'll use a we'll use a variety of methods which could include and that doesn't commit us to something. Is that sounds good? Okay. All right. So we'll do that for public outreach, um, project partnership and support. So this is where we need to get letters because we want to attach letters of support, and we talked about this before and. So we did talk about ACCT, and I just thought, what about co-housing? Crystal co-housing? Would that be appropriate to get a because you mentioned them? Well, how could hurt? So we also have it's kind of an inside job, but we've got core as well. And yeah. core. Yeah. And, and of course that's kind of regional. Regional planning. And and, and regional planning. Um and, and that's a Oh, Melissa's got her hand up. Yeah. yeah. Um, would, it, would it be helpful for just business owners to, to pen some letters? Or I don't know if that would be helpful or. <laughs> yeah. Business community. Yeah. I mean, that's core, but that's, you know, they're, they would be doing it as an entity. And I was just thinking if Are we can get letters from. from yes. I guess schools it says local schools, the school board could get something from the school board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, regional organizations, we, we got that a local nonprofit, mm -hmm. that would be ACCT. Um, my question is who, who can, or which, group of people can contact some of these people. I don't know anybody really on any of these groups. ACCT, do we have a contact there? No, but they've got um, Elise. They've got an executive director. Um, Elise is the woman's name. I Stein, I cannot remember. Should, should um, we take a look at the other application and see if this stuff's necessary before we- Sure, of course. Spend too yeah. much time. Passionate out. Okay. We don't need it, you know. Then. Sure, that makes sense. Oh, you're being all detail oriented, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, we have. I know we have limited time. It goes by so quick. Sure. I think we're pretty. We're pretty far along now. Okay. Well, anyway, those are. So that's at least five organizations. Plus, we could get from individual businesses. And Melissa, you might be able to wrangle some people from Main Street. Um, yeah, I can work on that if 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 you want to do it. I wouldn't think that it wouldn't hurt to have more. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, okay, so six one project so outcomes and goals. We, before we go oh, to yeah. the next section, let's back up and just go around, and make sure everybody's had an opportunity to sure say what say uh, what they think or any comments to the discussion today. So I know Rob, you said a few things, but have you got any additional thoughts or comments? No, I think that I'm hoping that what we've done so far can be transferred to the if we're going for the other um, that grant application that it's transferable. And I just wanted to try to keep things moving in our limited time and not spend time on things we potentially might not need. Um, that's all. We're just trying to work out the little things with it. Thanks. How about you, Tom? Okay, the only person I was thinking maybe I'd include maybe the Addison County Chamber of Commerce that might give you leads on other businesses, but I think a lot of the trust that you initially had there was for 
uh, nonprofits or quasi-governmental sort of properties, but Melissa had a good point. Include some business people. Yeah, that absolutely. Might be start. And which might include uh, somebody like um, Ben Harper's group there too. They're uh, kind of a key factor in uh, what's happening here soon. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see what we what the other proposal calls for. I'm assuming it will call for us to show some community support also. We yeah, can do so that. We've got, a, we've got a good list to work. Yeah. So okay. That's good. Um, Melissa. No, I'm sorry. I just, I don't know what happened. I lost focus or I was messing with my computer, but why are we thinking about changing what we're applying for? We, um, well, sorry. We, I mean, just in a sentence. <laughs> there's two grants out there and we get, are getting, we started walking down a path with this MPG and um, right. we are getting um, a lot of people recommending or talking about doing the zoning bylaw one as opposed to the MPG. So um, there's there's a crowd of, there's some momentum uh, that infers that that would be a more desirable, probably potentially more successful uh, grant to go after. And they're very it's, similar. They're very yeah. similar um, in preparation. Um, the MPG is more broad based, <laughs> but given the, focus that we have on housing, it probably is not that big a deal. Okay, I think so in the MPG, we're likely to be in a, we think, in a broader, more competitive pool. Yeah. Right. But the bylaws, I mean, that would include a grant that would be for the, the same thing we want to use it for? Yeah. It's a, it's a yeah. housing bylaw, it's to modernize the bylaws. Okay. So it's still, report. okay. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. It's very specific for what we're doing. Okay. Because ultimately, yeah. ultimately, ultimately, we want to reflect in our zoning what we've talked about in our town plan, so it's consistent from that point of view. Right, right. And you're right. It's it's probably there are probably fewer applications for that. I would imagine. Yeah, because being a broader, I mean, a, a tighter scope, I think there'll be less applicants. Okay, Lloyd, do you got any comments or thoughts? No, I think they're pretty well prepared. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. So let's so go, let's go on to a 6.1. So this is asking, how does this, aside what long term it does, this further statewide planning goals demonstrate the success of the product and the Vermont state goal is to promote Vermont's historic pattern of compact settlements surrounded by working farms, forests, and open space. So that should have a, a, a quotation mark at the end there after open space. And then I have outcomes that would demonstrate success would include applications for and development in the village planning area of ADUs and development of new housing units of various sizes and types upon newly subdivided land. So that's a concrete metric. Um, improvements to the walkability of the VPA, uh, and then uh, uh, successful outcome here would want, be one that allows smart growth in the rural planning area, increasing the housing stock or preserving the character of the land. That's a little more vague, but I couldn't figure anything more specific than that. And that's what the state goal is. And, uh, the only thing I'm, you might want to add to the rural planning yeah. is touching on the preservation of the, um, like the forest and farmland yeah. Um, yeah. that are prevalent in those in that area. Yeah, well, that's what I tried to capture under character of the land, but yeah. I can expand that. That would be the only other thing because it sort of touches directly on the state goal. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's fine. That seem okay? In agreement for that. And then 6.2 is just a check the box, which are the following statewide priorities does this project address? And it's fair and affordable housing plans and or regulations that implement enabling better places. So that one's easy. 
Super easy one. <laughs> um, uh, priority project explanation. This is where I got tired because it seemed to be asking me the same question over and over. Uh -huh. um, so on this one, you get into these statewide priorities. I'm not sure how much you're going to see that on the zoning, on the bylaw. Uh, on the bylaws, maybe. So okay. I, I, I would wait and come circle sure. back to this concept if you That's need fine. If you need it. Yeah. Okay. Um, 6.4, which is a designated area, is the only designated area we have now is a downtown, right? Yep. Um, Kevin, you were saying maybe we could talk about how this might be applicable to application for a neighborhood development area? So in the um, comments from the Regional Planning Commission, they, one of the comments was we should consider that. Okay. <laughs> Whether we ultimately adopt that or not um, would result in discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Conclusion of discussion. Is that something that would uh, then go into the explanation, which is down below. Would we add that saying like this might, would this project? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't see where it would relate to the existing areas okay. necessarily. All right. So I think if you go down, you see where I am. Uh, So this was trying to relate the downtown designation to the project we're doing. And you summed it up. Because that's really the only impact you're going to see that ties zoning to downtown district and housing. And I think you nailed it. And it's a title of the end. It should be village area. Okay, any, any questions or comments on that? Um, and then program success stories. <laughs> yeah. uh, do we have any program success stories? So the only, the only grant I know we have is the one that we just used for the town plan from 2019. Uh, we could add that in saying we got this grant, we got an MPG in 2019, and we then revamped the town plan and the AC or PC thought it was a wonderful plan. And now we're rolling further forward. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's really it. Is, is the next phase is taking your town plan and, and modifying your the bylaws to reflect that success. And of course, you got to throw it. The grant was in 2019. The town plan got rewritten, voted on, and, and approved by Addison County Regional. All in you threw COVID and lack of everything else that went on in there. You got to capitalize on COVID wherever you can. Yeah, that's a good point. Especially for the success side, I mean, that we we worked through a really tumultuous time to be able to pull that off. Yeah, that's a good thing. Turned it over in less than less than two years. Yeah. Um, oh, town plan in, in the year of living dangerously. I'd like to say we got stopped. In the COVID time. Yeah, my daughter writes grants for Boston Children's Hospital. She says, put COVID on the title, whatever you do. It's <laughs> true. <laughs> 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 um, then this is uh, nothing no. to say. No. So then comes the part that I just don't know. We talked about this briefly before, Chris. I, I think this is one where, when we did this last time, we worked with um, Valerie okay, pretty closely to get the budgeting stuff hammered out. So I think we have to see what the budget requirements or how much they detail we need in the next one. And the either myself, Valerie, and, and whoever is working with the planning commission, we sit down one afternoon and just hammer those numbers out. So I 
I, I, my, my discussions with Adam as far as um, consultancy or how to approach a consultancy or support to the board, um, he, and I, I list a few bullets to him and he, he didn't really discuss them, but he did make the comment that he would like to see a scope of work more detailed than just housing, which is what I had at the beginning of the meeting said we should add to this to the um, agenda here. So we need to talk about that a little bit. So we are all on the same page of what we want to do with this thing, I think. And then from that, that'll drive regional planning. He was indicating it turned around pretty quickly, a number. And then from that number, we could come up with a schedule and a cost, I would think. Yeah, well, it says if you, I was just looking now, I didn't even see this before. But on section two of the budget cost budget cost estimates, uh, that's further down. I think uh, there we go. Uh, please provide a letter, a letter or other documentation from a consultant with a cost estimate for tasks, including hourly rate. So if we could get that from uh, regional, right? Then that's that's what we need to do. And it's all good. Other ways to develop a realistic budget discussed with the municipal official. Okay. Coordinate with the RPC. I think the rest is again more boilerplate stuff. So, yeah. That I'm looking at. Yeah, those last few things are ick. Yeah. All right. So, um, any additional comments? We want Lloyd. Yeah. Any additional comments now that we're to the the end? Um, is someone who's going to take a look at the? Um, you know, you're talking about doing the uh, bylaw application. Who's going to take a look at that and see if we need something? We need additional. I will look at that. We'll look at that and see what's what we I think a lot of the questions are the same or very similar so a lot of this can be transferred over I think there are fewer questions actually but I'm not absolutely sure I, I took a quick look at it before so I'll see what's transferable and if there's anything new we need um, and I'll let you know and I hope to do that uh, some by sometime next week and this the deadline for the application is the same right everything's the same Actually, the bylaw one is uh, November 15th, so it gives us an extra 15 days. Yeah. Great, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the <laughs> Lord. <laughs> okay, so, Tom, uh, sorry for listening. Sorry. Uh, so uh, once you take a look at that, uh, do you want to let me know uh, about if you want me to reach out to the other businesses? And be great. Yes, absolutely. Kind of how to frame the request? <laughs> Yep, absolutely. I will okay. do that. And if I can transfer it over, they have a similar system. You know, this, this thing that uh, Chris had up on the screen, it's not the actual application. It's an application guide, which they say you should use this and then transfer the data into the actual application. It's just a Word document. So if I can get the other one up and running, I will send it around again with all the language that I have in it. Um, and then you can make any comments you want. Um, but uh, it would be great if people think of, uh, if we need it, uh, you know, um, letters from different groups. And I think getting to businesses is a terrific idea. Uh, so it doesn't sound like just a touchy feely thing. Tom, do you have any additional comments as we come to the close on? No, I, think, I think I understand that. Again, I want to give <clears throat> thanks to Jeff and, both for kind of diving in the weeds there to get all that straight out, okay, which is thanks. great. But I agree with um, everybody that I think the limiters, limited scope of the other appeal is probably the best way to go. So I I'd encourage that. Is there a, like a realtors group, Tom? Yes. You know, so of course, there's an Addison County uh, Board of Realtors, and uh, they might be able to endorse something in that regard too. Um, yeah, as I'm understanding here. As I'm understanding here that that um, whole thing might not be necessary if we go the other route. But 
either way, I think they would, they might be willing to do that. And I'd be happy to approach them about it. That would be great. We don't know yet. We'll figure it out. Thanks. And then uh, Rob, any closing comments or thoughts? Yeah, I was just waiting to say thank you to Jeff for putting in all his time and work on this and kind of heading it up. And yeah, it's definitely coming together and I hope that it's all transferable. So <laughs> there wasn't that much for not. So no, I think it'll be, I, I think it'll be okay. I, I had it in the back of my mind all the time uh, that this might be, might be what, where we would go. Um, and I think it's, most of it's pretty similar. And I learned a lot about housing and <laughs> in the meantime. <laughs> But I think I, I do think, and, and I give credit to, uh, to Kevin for this, that the idea, I think we should really keep it in there that isn't just about houses, not just about dwelling units, but about the entire environment, the built environment, which includes roads and, and sidewalks and who knows what else it might be impacted because housing doesn't exist in a vacuum. It's going to impact everything if we can really get an increase. I mean, I'll be very curious to see what that 20 unit um, project does because um, that would bring a lot of people into town. Yeah. Okay, so thanks, Jeff. Um, you had indicated something about assistance or support. Are you in a position where you need- I think I'm okay office? right now. The only thing where uh, I might need that assistance is in getting these letters. Um, but let's see if we need that. Okay. okay. Um, let's see what letters we need, and then we can we can figure out how to do that. Okay. So the next the next and it's interrelated is to talk about um, what sort of a scope that we would like to present to regional planning to determine. Um, what their work effort would be and the associated cost. I took, and Chris, I think I sent it to you, a um, word doc for scope of APRC. Yeah, there it is right there. Can you share that? So my intent with this is to start a discussion um, some of these things that may be a great idea, some of them may be a stupid idea, although no such thing as a stupid idea, you know. <laughs> That's what they say anyway. Um, or there's something that uh, we need to consider or have them consider when they develop, and it's not on this list. So um, we can start at the top, I think, and go down through and then uh, <coughs> embellish or delete, add accordingly. So the, the first bullet would be to document historical and re recent settlement patterns um, to understand setbacks, lot sizes, zone uses, that sort of thing, um, particularly in high density residential. Um, we're not totally in sync with, or in my opinion, is we're not totally in sync with our um, mechanics of sites with what um, exists in the village and what we may need to consider as we make the um, high density uh, more consistent with what, um, you know, a lot, a lot of the um, initiatives from the state level are concerned. So, I guess I'll open that up to discussion and see <coughs> what people think, value, or if there's some way to do that differently or if it's important. I, I think having a good background is, is helpful in this kind of stuff, um, especially if you can help clarify why some things are the way they are in terms of if it's just been carried forward and really needs to be looked at or was modified to its current um, standing for a, a reason. Yeah. They would have that kind of stuff. 
already done? We would probably have to somehow generate, I would imagine. I don't know what. I mean, we don't have any of that information currently. We've got tax mats, which show lot sizes, but they don't show buildings or anything, if I understand, if I remember, right? No, not that. I'm trying to think there's settlement pattern maps out of the regional that were available. I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, just my two cents on the, the, the historical um, settlement patterns. Um, one of the, I know there's a huge focus statewide on creating more density in your denser areas. But one of the things when I sat on the planning commission that we wanted to make sure we didn't lose focus of is Bristol's a village. We do we do you want the density you have in, that Virgins has in its in its city core or in, in other parts where you become too dense, you lose that village feel and you become almost more of a city or a, a mini city feel. And, and so really paying attention to your historic and your character, what makes what makes the village of Bristol the village of Bristol? And not losing sight of that just for the sake of building more houses. Right. So that's just my so, so long. Sure. So I, I think you know I, I think we've put some of this language in to you know increase the the amount and flexibility of housing while preserving the historic character yeah. of the village planning area. Uh, and that's that's verbiage, but it, it, it plays out I think what you're getting at. Yeah. Um, as I think that's perfectly doable. Yeah, because, because I think the reuse and readapt and readapting structures is a great concept. Um, and you hit on that in a little bit here. We talk about um, multifamily dwellings and, and things like that. So I, I think you're going to get there. Um, but that's just that's just my soapbox, and I get on that yeah. every once in a while. Um, I get, sometimes we, we get really honed in on oh we need more housing we need more housing yeah. and then we lose the big picture of why do we need more housing uh, so I don't, I don't want it to look like a city yeah. Rob do you have any uh, thoughts on that bullet no I gave them already so. Okay. Tom. I'm good with that. And as, as um, uh, was being discussed there, I rolled through my head a little bit that the character of the village is changing. And it's going more from single family homes to multifamily residences. So that's kind of a character change in itself that's kind of up. It's not necessarily good or bad one way or the other. It's just the way it is. So um, see what Chris is saying. Yeah, I think the other change we're seeing is that land which has been vacant but not developed is now being offered for sale and or developed. You see, that's very clear. Just walk around and you see it. And there's more vacant land that is available for that. Uh, Melissa. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, you're talking about adapting existing uh, buildings, but also, um, as Tom said, just more, I, I, I suppose, I don't, I don't, I don't know enough about the zoning yet to, to know how far this can go, but some of the bigger houses being turned into apartments, um, I mean, to me, you're still maintaining the, at least the look and the, of the village building wise, but you're allowing more people to come into the village by, by doing that. Um, so, I mean, it's, it seems like you either can repurpose and do, do things within the village, like turning the houses into uh, apartments, maybe limited in, in number per house or per square foot, whatever, or you end up with, expanding to bedroom communities, which we don't want, <laughs> you know, um, like a suburb. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I would be more for, for uh, 
making more housing available within the village. Okay, Lloyd. So I don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying we want to turn every large house into an apartment building, but you know, if we allow <laughs> a little increase uh, over the, you know, over the years, I would think that would be a good thing. I don't know. Yeah, and when we talk about doing that, the, the, the one that I always use as the cautionary tale is the hill section of Burlington. Um, the hill section of Burlington for the longest time was larger old homes, single family homes that over about a 40 year period were converted into um, almost all apartments. Um, and it has changed the there is no longer a neighborhood feel in the hill section of Burlington. It is rentals, it's college, it's 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 congestion. So it, it, it but I, so so yeah. it's it, that, that's the cautionary tale that I always throw out there, just for people to look at both to, because there's also great success stories out there as well. Um, so it's finding that that happy balance between the two, I believe, is is what is what you need right. to right. Right. You can't, you don't have to go all in. <laughs> you can do a little bit, but also the fact that it is a lot of college kids yeah, the there, that, that, that's just a whole different vibe than what so, I would think we would have. Okay. Yeah. So I think the, 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 fir the first three are really interrelated. So the next, the next question is what, what are we got currently that's working well and what, um, what sort of uh, under understand current UDR zoning and suitability for desired development going forward? And looking at again zone configurations, um, allowed uses, any local extension of the village um, configuration, and then the next bullet would be to utilize the um, comments from the select board as they develop, that, that was a comment made and I don't know if there's specifics or not based on what they get for input for, for people that are that perceive they're not allowed to do stuff. And then Chris, you, you get a lot of that commentary too. Yeah. So those three bullets, if you will, um, are sort of the background, if you background to say, here's what we, had compared to what we've got to compared to what we may want to go towards. So again, I, I'd like to open it up to discussion a little bit as to the sense if those are pertinent, pertinent things to develop as we revisit zoning with the housing um, um, consideration. You yeah, think, Jeff. You know, a lot, well, I was just going to add that a lot of this, this was mentioned earlier, uh, a lot of these issues are discussed in pretty clear terms in this uh, publication, Enabling Better Places, um, uh, which is uh, a zoning guide for Vermont neighborhoods. And it talks specifically about how to deal with these issues. Uh, and so two things there is when it's it's worth reading or glancing at because um, it lays out a lot of these issues about like multifamily homes and accessory dwelling units, but also talks about parking spaces and things which we're not necessarily thinking of. So it's it's worth looking at um, and it might be worth uh, referencing because actually the grant application says you should show how this how this reflects enabling better places. Okay. Then I can send that document around or, or you can just find so it. I think I got something. Yeah. Into it. I looked at it a little bit, but not yeah. in depth. Lloyd, were you, you any comments or? Yeah, Mark. <clears throat> I think there's probably there's some, you know, there are some good things in there. Things are going up. Right. No. At least the trend always has been the things are going to grow. And, um, I don't think we're too much in danger of that. The hill area of Burlington, because we don't have any money to move into those apartments and so forth. 
We don't have a certain population of that age, and we don't have a lot of small families to move into the region. Big houses, but <clears throat> there would be some of that. But it's not necessarily that. But it's just, but they did totally change that area. But a lot of the big old homes were from a lot of the rich people from that time. And it was the center of, right. of the, the business business zone, and then that just kind of spread out. They move. They move on to bigger, better. Spear Street. Uh, yeah, well, if I could just go back, um, the um, enabling better places, this really, again, we can use their terminology sometimes, talks about doing a character survey of the housing. And that's a, a nice term that relates to that, you know, documenting and, and talking about preserving the, the character. They talk about doing a character survey. What type of houses do you have and what are the lot sizes and how much do you want to preserve that and how much are you willing to change it? Okay. Now that's a key question. Yeah, that would be. And, and there's a couple other factors when we when you when we look at the housing and changing. Um, just looking at the what you touched on parking. Um, we're talking a lot about like re, re, removing all requirements for um, parking minimums. Um, that's great if you have on-street parking, which we do, which we do. Which we do not. <laughs> right. So it's it's unfortunately something we still need to address. Yeah. Uh, the other big one is we don't have um, we have wastewater limitations. We do not have a public uh, yeah. wastewater treatment facility. So anytime you add a housing unit to a lot, there has that has to be approved by the state and. We're fortunate we sit on gravel, right? So we, we are we are able to do predominantly traditional septic, but we're going to run out of how much septic we can. In how much septic do we really want the village of Bristol sitting on? Yeah. I mean that's just that's just a hypothetical question. So those are just some of the things that when when some of my observations that I've I've seen with um, some of the limiting factors we have to consider when we, when yeah. we look at these. Uh, park, parking there has to be there has to be parking at most. Tom has his name. Tom, go ahead. Oh, just uh, to insert here again, I, I'd like best to to uh, promulgate that publication he's talking about. There it sounds of great interest. So if we could either get an idea of where we can get it, or if it can be sent to us somehow, I for one would like to see it. I'll send a copy out and also a link to where you can get it online. Okay, yeah, it is, it's a linkable document. Yeah, it is, yeah. I, I just got it online. Um, okay, so, Melissa, do you have any additional comments at this point on the first three bullets? Um, I mean, I'm not sure how in-depth we want to go at this point as to, you know, I, that was going to be one of my questions at the end, is it, at what point are we going to start looking at housing options and, and getting ideas and, and, and things. Are we going to wait until we, if see if we get the grant and get the study, or are we going to, as, as a committee, as a commission start proposing ideas and discussing? And I think, I think if you look at bullet number four, that's really the amalgamation of the first, of the background work, if you will, is it bullet number four? I'm sorry. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Is it the what seems to work? Or yeah. Right? So, so that would be there the point where you're talking about developing your finished product. And then some other. So I guess let's stop with those first four bullets. Does any any of that make sense to communicate to the planning commissioner, regional planning, as to what we want as as part of the work, work scope for them to uh, work on? Do we have alignment there, or do we have concerns, or there's different tacks that we should be taking with that background information, if you will? 
looks good to me. Yeah, because I mean, it's got a, a logical move to it because you look at your history, you look at where what you want for settlement patterns, what some of the limitations we run into currently, and then really um, figuring out how to formulate that into um, workable documents. I, I like the way you progress through that. <laughs> some other considerations. Um, this next one is a hang up of mine and I'm not sure how valuable it is to the rest of the commission, but to step back and take a 10,000 foot look on where we're at right now. Um, so I, I, so I don't know what the value is there or the burning desire of the commission, but do you have any comments, Rob, on that particular bullet? That could be a long deep dive all in of itself um <laughs> try, trying to go through that uh but i think at, you know 10 or even 30 or fifty thousand. look at whether that makes sense to look at um is a good check-in of where we're at and how we're gonna get to where we need to be so so it should be a fifty thousand foot length you say <laughs> I, I think that that one can could be the sole focus, you know, if, if we wanted to go that route uh, in terms of a solution for things as opposed to all the other components that we've been talking about. Okay, Tom, have you got any input for that one? Oh, I, I agree with everything everybody said with that so far. I'm good. Thanks. Melissa? I'm good. Uh, Lloyd? Sorry. Yeah. I want your things to, to make sense at the current time. I mean, they had reasons back in. We have different now. Okay, Jeff. Yeah, I'm good with that. So I, I guess not 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 to beat the drum here, but this is kind of a fine point between an MPG grant and a zoning grant, too. You know, I don't know, but we can keep it in there and for what it's worth it, and for what it's worth. So the next. The next two things are kind of kind of side, not, not side, but they're like more detailed things. Um, as we work through constructing where we want to go, um, looking at citing, you know, strategies for walkability, bikeability, that sort of thing, uh, relationships of zones to high density. So, do we? We've got a high density area that's very walkable. As you go further out, obviously, you've got more of a challenge for that. Um, along with that is, you know, job enhancement. Um, you know, what do we got? You know, small home-based businesses or formal small businesses, medium-sized businesses, and how all that's interconnected and walkable. Um, yeah, you know, let's talk about those two briefly. If there's value there, if somebody has a better way to say it, or if we uh, don't think they're important for the Regional Planning Commission to work with us on. Jeff? Well, when we, yeah, I don't know. Are we straying when we start talking about small and home-based businesses and needs? Because that's not what the bylaw modernization grant is supposed to be dealing with. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, it's a it's a, certainly a valid topic, but that's not what this grant is for, as I understand. I have to go back and reread the purpose of the grant, but I don't. I think it's pretty specifically limited to to housing. So that's wouldn't the, that wouldn't that be included if somebody wants to start a home based business and get a home? <laughs> Um, well, yeah. Is it, I we mean, is that it. something that, that we can promote? Uh, 
you know, uh, to people start thinking about it. And certainly people are doing a lot more from home than they used to. So I guess in support of that, I would say that relates to infrastructure. Yeah. And then yeah. there are specific zoning requirements that we have currently controlling these things that we could work not as a primary issue necessarily, but they could be wrapped in and integrated. Um, if, if, yeah. if it makes sense to um, look at a livable community. Yeah, and I'm not trying to support it. I'm just trying to. Uh, so evaluate it. Offer a perspective. So the only concern I have with it, the first piece from a practical standpoint in the end, when you talk about the walking distances to intermixed businesses, um, I'm not sure how you zone that. I don't know how you plan it, but I'm not sure how you zone it. Mm -hmm. and, and those are two different value words. Zoning is the, is the yeah. so is the use tables. I, the, the second half of configuration of small and home, but figuring out where you want to focus those things so that you can add, so you can add value add, that that you can add to your zoning. But some of the, a couple of these, I'm like, actually, how we do this from a zoning standpoint. So but I think that's something that, you keep it in your scope and, and, and keep it in your radar and, and if you can incorporate that. I think you're good, but I'm not sure how we put it on paper. That's my only. Yeah. Lloyd, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, there's probably quite a scope of um, home-based businesses and some would have impact and some wouldn't show up on it. Uh, thing. I don't know if that makes much difference to the actual question at the point we were at, but uh, enhancements for job potential um, or something, something you want to figure in, but um, our, our um, impact on jobs that might be coming in is a little limited. Okay. What we could could couldn't do for yeah. to encourage them. I suppose it's I suppose at some point to consider all that stuff. You know, place to live if you don't have a job. You know, you've got other expenses to go to and so forth. Okay. How about you, Melissa? Um. You know, I I would think it's um, appropriate to talk about it. I mean, home-based businesses can turn into, you know, not home-based and hiring folk, you know, hiring people in the town. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I don't know what the zoning is for that in Bristol. You know, what, what, is there anything that talks about having a home-based business in your home? Yeah, we actually talk about home. Yeah, we define home occupation and home businesses. Um, it's, whether it's in the physical structure or in a, in a secondary structure, number of employees. Right. Um, and both those are, um, at some level, um, dealt with at a state statute level as well. Okay. I mean, most home-based businesses, I, I think, don't, have employees coming into the into the home. It's mostly the person who's living there, you know, who's doing the doing the business. So I don't. This, this I, I just, yeah, I mean, I just think it's something that would not be bad for us to encourage people, um, you know. And and if that's something we're going to do, then it should be included here. Tom, I think um, still has a long history of home businesses, and it's kind of a rock in the state for that matter. Also, on the other hand, this is pointed out there that okay, bring in small business, and always the dream is that it grows. 
means employees parking, if you can find employees, number two. The other is that uh, Bristol has been well known as an incubator town to get businesses going, and we don't have the infrastructure to perpetuate uh, them. And I don't, that's a whole different subject and a different time, I think. But it's still something we have to deal with and certainly encourage if we can. Okay, thanks. Um, Rob. There, there's that button. Uh, so this kind of spills into, do we need to talk about the zoning and allowed uses of businesses to support increased housing uh, to prevent being a complete bedroom community or is that acceptable, you know, if we're going that way, you know, because with the past of some of the businesses that Tom was saying that have grown and moved on, uh, whether it be what was allowed through zoning or infrastructure support or whatever other reason um, that needs to be addressed uh, with increased housing and growth uh, to, to keep that balance of working in town as well. So, so I'm just looking at the bylaw modernization grant uh, brochure. It says it's to update bylaws, implement zoning for great neighborhoods, which is part of that enabling uh, better neighborhoods, and expand choice and opportunity for homes in pedestrian-oriented neighborhoods. So thinking about it, I think that if people have a greater opportunity to do business out of their home, that that's expanding choice and opportunity. Somebody who, that, now we're not suffering for lack of people who want to buy homes, <laughs> right? It's the opposite. But this would allow a broader set of people maybe to come in, someone who really, who wants to have a home business but might be, might be zoned out of it now. Well, we could find out if that's the case. If it's not the case, then you, you don't have to deal with it. So that could still be part of the scope of work. Um, it's, you know, is, is there something that could be done on this that would um, increase the opportunity of housing for people? That's a fair question. Okay. The last two, Oops, Tom, I, I'm sorry, Tom. I want to insert something here just for interest. Uh, then this last week in Bristol, there's four single family homes on the market for sale and 15 under contract. Sure. I'll give you, kind of a, give you kind of a picture of what's going on in the real estate world here in Bristol. And this is an all time low, the number of, homes for sale in Bristol, but uh, it's interesting to see that there's that many that have sold and are under contract, but haven't closed as yet. So I uh, just I'll keep that in mind. Now, as Jeff mentioned that, okay, it's a situation now, but it certainly won't remain that way necessarily in the long run. So well, that's, that's, pretty was, interesting. that's a question I was gonna have for you, Tom, actually, is um, I assume there's numbers or there's info out there as far as the real estate, uh, the home sales through the years, like we, we both know that the, the real estate market ebbs and flows in this area um, from time to time. And so that we're planning for not just today, but for the future when we place these things, just if you overbuild and then don't have anyone to live here, then you end up with vacancies, which then creates a whole different beast. So, um, it's just one of those thoughts when just before you spoke, I was like, hey, I, I, there's a realtor here. He, he might actually have access to some of that information. Yeah. So is that, is that worthy of a, a scope I have discussion? Um, what is, what's the right? So let me just, um, again, I'm, I'm paging through the bylaw modernization grant brochure now. These grants are limited to projects with a singular and well-defined focus. If multiple products 
or separate consultant projects are proposed for these funds, the application may not meet a single project scope requirement. So we do want to make sure that we don't spread it out too far. Um, now this is not requiring more than one consultant, but it's not a multiple project product still. So I guess it's probably okay. But yeah, you know, the, the, the purpose of the grant is to increase the housing stock. It's not necessarily to match the stock better to other things. You know what I mean? But maybe we can get it in there anyway. I have a question. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, but isn't the you said a focused scope? Isn't the scope that we just want to get the grant to hire someone to, you know, do a study, a survey, or whatever to give us more information? I mean, or or do they want to know? Do they want a focused scope of what will happen after that person tells us, gives us that information? Well, it's not just the information. We want specific ideas on how the bylaws should be changed to increase the, the size and the flexibility of the housing. That's the purpose. It's a bylaw modernization grant. It's not a history grant. I know, but isn't it? I thought we were applying so that we could have money to hire someone to. Yeah. Isn't that what, what we were yeah, so then I'm not sure why we have to, so we have to, for the grant, we want this, but then we have to say everything we want to do after we get the uh, the consultant gives us the uh, report. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's, it's a, seems like it might be a fine line there. Um, because I mean, we we started out a discussion talking about a character survey or just adding so much housing that we changed things to the point there that it's not as desirable to live here. And I think while we want to entertain and and we want to focus on how to best um, allow housing opportunities here. We don't want to get so cut and dry that all we want to do is put in more houses and lose some of the, I don't call, I don't think amenities is the right word, but some of the, the character uh, of the, the character, some of the side capabilities or desires. Um, and I think there, there are some nuances with this scope and maybe even regional planning as we, as we give this to them and they could maybe even say, hey, wait a minute, You're, this, this is not really what yeah. is valuable too. But well, and also the, the, the grant has to conform to Vermont's smart growth principles. Right? Growth that maintains the historic development pattern of compact village and urban centers separated by rural countryside. Uh, and then a number of other things, but it, it, I mean, it, it isn't just saying build a lot of houses, right? right. It's in, it, in a smart growth pattern. So what we've talked about so far is our scope. Do you see it deviating from No, that? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. I think there may be some periphery things that when it comes time to actually writing the grant, you leave out. Is But having it as part of your overall picture and maybe as your ends from the work that is done with whoever you have for a consultant, you end up getting there, but yeah. you know, not making that part of your, your application. Some of the, like some of the base business aspects of it, I think, again, it's, it's that's like layer two. I, I think you focus on the, you can use that as, as some of your rationale and your justification of why you want to build where you want or how you want to infill and, and develop and, and those things. Um, but I don't 
think in the grant you really want to focus on those specific um, parts. So it's kind of like you want the grant to get, give you certain information, which you then use to decide these other side yeah. issues. I, yeah. Remember the scope that we're asking the Regional Plan Commission to do is what we're going to use to will attach to this and use for the budget justification. So we don't want to ask for a bunch of things that are outside the scope of this program. Well, yeah, that's, that's certainly true, but we don't want to limit our scope to the point where we're not covering the effort to consider those things. Because I mean, it's all, it's all laborers that convert to a dollar per hour price. Sure. Um, and, um, you know, if they're not giving us the right amount of hours that we ultimately want or need to sort through this thing, we're just shortchanging ourselves. So, yeah, okay. I'm, I mean, I'm but, fine with that. So, I, the last couple of things, and I think they kind of go together. So, I'm, I'm trying to combine some of this stuff um, is understanding options for state designated programs. The plan, regional planning has talked about this neighborhood development area. They have for years. And, and I think I think we, well, I, I've got it in here, obviously, because it seems like it should be something that we seriously discuss. One thing I don't quite understand about that is they talk about public sewage, which is a, as a, as a non-starter for us. But none, nonetheless, I think... As we go through this discussion, um, it, it does, if it makes sense to have that on the table. The other, the other thing is some strategies to promote affordable housing, uh, density bonuses, um, and are we using our POD, PUD, um, PUD strategy or PUD regulations properly? So, um, Rob, do you have any thoughts about those last two bullets? Uh, it's those last two, <clears throat> somewhat zoning related, but I think the yeah, effective use is potentially outside of this and more of an implementation uh, discussion uh, and an evaluation of that. Um, so, the, the that specific bullet's a little trickier to wrap into this, I think, because that's something that can be corrected more short short term, I think, uh, unless the answer is that it needs other regulation and um, guidance in the plan and and uh, UDR for that. So the neighborhood development area is an application process with the state. So there would be some sort of effort there, but I understand what you're saying with the other two is those are just something that within the mechanics of updating the regs you can deal with. Is that what I'm hearing from you? <coughs> yeah. Updating the regs or, um, you know, with, as far as the, at least for the density bonuses with the effective use of PUDs, I think that that's, a little trickier because I have my own thoughts on the effective use of PUDs and how that should be handled at this point, but that's a separate conversation. So that's definitely <laughs> okay. Just what part of the mean by density bonus? So if you, you you allow a contractor, a developer, he's going to put in six units, let's say, if he makes a low income unit or two out of those six, there's the ability to have him add additional more units. Densely, I mean, that's what I understand. Yeah. You probably have a better. Right, so it, um, it, it allowed, so we'll use the village area right now. The, the, the village area right now is, is quarter acre zone. So you, need, you can put one housing unit for every quarter acre of dirt you have. So you have a, a two acre lot, and so you you would you could build an eight unit apartment building. But if you were able, if you wanted to designate those for either affordable or 
there's a handful of different things you can utilize, the criteria you can place to it. Um, but you then would allow that developer instead of bowling games to build eight units to be able to add a ninth or maybe a tenth, depending on how much criteria they meet. So it allows you to build more stuff on the same piece of dirt by by meeting some of the needs that, that are identified by the community. Um, Richmond, I think it is, I think it's Richmond, gives you a density bonus if you create off-street parking. So there's all sorts of random um, qualifiers that the towns will add to try to, it's really trying to entice the developer to build additional things in your community that you want by giving them a little bit on the back end as far as more stuff they can build. So I hope that did that help. Or did I confuse some the hell out of it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah some of both. Good. Yeah. yeah. So again, project eligibility, grant funded projects must increase allowed lot slash building put slash dwelling unit density by adopting and then a bunch of things that you can do. So it's that's that's in there. That's the project. Mm -hmm. That must be yeah. something you're aiming to do is to increase density. Or increase allowed density. Put it that way. Okay. Um, Melissa, do you have any comments on this last two bullets? Um not really. No, everybody's kind of said everything. Thanks. Um, Tom. No, I'm good also. So Rob, Tom, Jeff, did you get everything you wanted to say? Yep. Okay. So is there anything, is there anything from anybody's perspective that is amiss with um, these parameters, if we go to a regional planning and say, hey, help us out with this grant, how, how much is it going to cost to help us out with these items? I think that's reasonable. Okay. And from the conversation we've had, I believe the only thing I've heard that we should drop is the effective use of PUDs. Did I catch that properly or not? Um, something you don't necessarily have in there. What, what, what was the reason for dropping that? Uh, I understood. Well, Chris and Rob can probably get it, but I understood complexity was a reason. But so I think to include effective use of PUDs isn't necessarily a. I don't want to say fair statement, but that's the best phrasing I can come up with at this point. Um, I think that that's something that as we're in a new environment of implementing that stuff that needs to get figured out um, other ways. Um, and we can talk about that later, but I think that that's something that can be resolved unless we further dive and, and reassess our our new subdivision and uh, UDR regulation, so. Well, what you can do here again is put, for example, or which could include. Yeah, uh, what I'm hearing from Rob though is some mechanics, not a visionary issue where Chris is over there thinking. Yeah. Because I, I I don't think PUDs will promote affordable housing. Um, PUDs create different settlement type patterns more than anything. Um, and boy, I, I think we could definitely use PUDs differently in Bristol. Um, but I, I agree with Rob, that's a big, 
that's a big, big undertaking to reevaluate, rewrite, and reformulate how we do PUDs in our town. Is that where you is that where you're concerned for Rob? Somewhat, somewhat. Um, you know, the, the affordable housing aspect of that, I don't think is um, as applicable as the density bonuses are um, or so, something else altogether. Um, but yeah, I think that that is, that would be a very large undertaking for that one component. Okay, is there anything else that um, I've missed as far as modify, I've made a few additional comments here. I can't remember. Uh, regarding the character survey, um, keeping the village character together with it, with some of the research that would be done. Um, anything else that we should be thinking about or setting aside as we ask regional planning to support this? Okay, I will send this document. I will make a few changes to it and send it out to everybody. And um, I'll do that tomorrow and then uh, midweek. Wait a minute, today's what, Tuesday? I appreciate, uh, let us soak for a day or so, a day maybe. And then uh, I'll approach regional planning like Thursday with this as to what we are thinking about for their support for scope of, of work. Is that, does that sound reasonable to everybody or, or not? Yeah. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Okay. Um, I think that takes care of that issue. Item. Um, training, I, I am thinking at this point, we'll just table that um, and then try to pick it up in another month. Does anybody have a problem with that, given the time? No? That's a useful, kind of useful table. I think that's fine. Okay. No new business, so we're on to public comment. Is there any public comment? Hearing none, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Should motion to adjourn. Lloyd, do you want to second it, Rob? Lloyd's vote moved. Rob second. Everybody in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Thank you very much. Very productive meeting. Have a good night. Thanks. Thank you all. Have a great night. Good night.